So here's an interesting graphic. This is about uh, how many jobs are actually in STEM. Turns out actually computer science has most of them, but just saying. Anyway, uh, Eclipse. So when you create a new project in Eclipse, you're going to basically do file, new, and new Java project. It'll walk you through a few steps, um, naming the project, that kind of thing. And then it'll create a series of folders that look something like this, where you have the name of your project, a source, maybe you added a file in, maybe you didn't, and then the runtime library. Now your code goes inside of a class within your source folder. So if I want to create a new class, I do new class. So if I ever need to add another file that has text in it. So if I'm doing, I don't know, guessing game. You can have a public static void main if this is your main class. You don't have to. If I put that in, it'll automatically fill that in for me. And it's right here. If you have code and you do not have a project, you cannot execute your program. Code can only be executed from within a project. If you already have a project that exists and you want to put it into Eclipse, under File, Import, under this general thing, there's existing projects. So that's how you pull in a project you've already created if you want to do it. Another option is just to create a new one and copy and paste your files over. But just keep in mind that the file it's going to execute is this one within this project here. All right. So some things about the classes in Java. Public static void main is where it starts. This is the only time you should use the keyword static, unless you have a very compelling reason why you want to do something else. Uh, static is uh, a word that basically means that it's global to everything. So if you put it in like a static variable in, everybody has access to your static variable, which means that if you were writing a code for somebody else to use, they could easily screw up your code by altering all your static variables. So generally speaking, you only want static to exist in one place, and that's main. The only other place I can think of that you might want to have it is if you are making constants. So you have some value that you basically want to assign a number to, but you give it a name instead. That's about the only other time you should use static. Now, a number of people who have programmed in the past like to like just keep putting the keyword static in until their code works because they don't want to deal with scope, and that's probably a bad idea. Um, there's a number of reasons why that might cause problems. Now, there is some restrictions on the static methods. Uh, you're only allowed to use static variables within this, which is why in every one of my examples, I'm going to just do something like this as the very beginning thing, where I'm going to just create a new one of whatever my class is. The reason I do this is so that I can actually create whatever variables I want, and then this will then run the constructor for this guy. Uh, public guessing game is the constructor for this one. So a couple things to notice about the way I've named these. So over here, this class name, the name of the actual file itself, the Java file, must be the same as the class, which must be the same as the constructor. All three of those have to match exactly, upper lowercase, the exact same. Uh, if you ever need to, like you've accidentally named it wrong over here, to rename it in Eclipse, you actually go under Refactor Rename. It's hiding in there. Refactor is a fancy word which basically means go through all of your code and do this thing. So rename. A few other things about style. Notice that the class begins up here and ends down here, and I've indented everything over that's within that. Also notice when I have another set of braces here, I tab everything over within that. If I put an if statement in here, if A equals B, assuming A and B were actual things, system.out.println, come on, keyboard, catch up with me. There we go. Stuff. Notice that I tabbed this over as well. Every time you open up a new brace, you should tab it over. Uh, those of you used to Python are probably used to this because you have to do it that way. But this is good style. That way I can look at your code and tell whether or not a piece of code is within an if statement or not. There is an auto formatting system that helps you out, but like if I start, if I put in like another if statement here, it won't automatically move this over. There is a thing where you can highlight all your code and underneath source, 
you can format the code and it'll automatically try and re-tab everything for you. Um, but don't depend on that. It is a style choice whether or not this brace right here is on the same line or it's on the new line. There are people that go to Holy Wars over which way it should be, but I don't really care as long as you are consistent. Speaking of which, naming things. So in Java, there's a style called camel case that you'll often see. So notice that this G is capitalized and this G is capitalized. Basically, every time there's a new word, you capitalize it. Now, in classes, so like guessing game is the name of my class or any kind of object, you capitalize the first letter. If it's a method, so if I create a new method down here, public void my method, you only capitalize after the first word. That way you can, by looking at a particular piece of code, you can tell if something is an object or if it's a method. Those of you used to C++, functions and methods are almost the same thing. Uh, variable names, you end up using the same as this here. So you use lowercase on the first word and uppercase on each word after that. Now, to be honest, I can name this whatever I wanted uh, where, as long as it starts with a letter and has only letters, numbers, and underscores. So I could, in fact, name this, this is George. That's legal, technically, underscore five. So that is technically a legal name. That perhaps is not the best descriptive name, though, um, as to whatever this function does. So while you are allowed to name everything whatever you want, you should name things that are descriptive, even if it means that there's a little more typing. This is kind of a way of commenting. If your name is really good, so it's like multiplies by two is the name of your method, that's a pretty clear descriptor of what the heck your thing does, unless it doesn't multiply by two, and then that's not good. Um, so you want to try and name your methods well so that they're somewhat descriptive of what they do. Also, variables. If I have something that is like counter, that's pr a lot better than like f, like int f. I don't know what f is. What does f mean? Unless like there's some compelling reason why the letter f is a good descriptor of that particular variable, it's probably better to describe it in a better way. Speaking of which, commenting. All of your projects are going to end up needing comments. And there's a particular set of things that I'm always looking for that you must have in all of your code in Java. You must have at the top what this project does. So this game will have the user guess a number between 1 and 10, or whatever it is. This is so that future versions of you don't have to look at all of your code and try and figure out what on earth you were thinking three years ago. It's much easier to just read at the top what it does as opposed to trying to reverse engineer all of the code that you're seeing. Because eventually you'll probably write enough code that you won't remember what every piece of code is. Other things you should do. Who the author is, because eventually you may be sharing code online and it's a good idea to put your name on it. There we go. And then the date. The reason for the date is so that you can tell if this is your old code or your new code. So you want to update this as you go. So 9, 21, 16. So those three pieces should be at the top of every one of your classes so that it's basically, it's kind of like putting your name on the top of a piece of paper on an essay or whatever it is. It's just so that you know in the future what this thing is. Also, it's hilarious when someone tries to steal your code and forgets to change your name in there. The other thing that you need is a comment before each of your methods. So this is the constructor for guessing game. This is a terrible name. Uh, by two. Method multiplies by two. And this is main method to start the program. If you ever see two slashes, that actually uh, means that it ignores the rest of the line. If you want multi-line comments, you can do slash star 
and then star slash at the other end, and that'll comment everything in between those. Generally speaking, when you're uh, programming, if there's a piece of code that you kind of want to pull out for a second to see if it's working, it's a good idea to comment it out rather than delete it, because there's a possibility that if you retype that line, you might mess it up. So if I am testing pieces of code, what I'll do is I'll comment out sections of it. So if I want to see if this is working or not, maybe I comment that out. That way, I, I can easily put it back into my code. Um, if there are any overly complex sections within your methods, you should probably also comment those as well. So if you have a very complicated series of if statements, you should probably say what each of those does. Some people will actually write their entire code in comments, and then you just fill in the code as to what it does below each comment, and then your commenting is done. And also, you've thought through your project before you go. So all of that is on commenting and style and naming. <laughs>